One thing that's taken the nation and our generation by storm, especially this year in 2023, is the, um, not just the emergence, but the integration of artificial intelligence uh, into our everyday activities as a generation. It feels as though looking at what's just happened in one year, in 12 months, uh, is extraordinary. Um, it's exciting. It's frightening. But we don't even know the uh, tip of the iceberg with this. Interesting enough, Elon Musk was issuing a great warning two years ago about what was, what was coming. Um, and then there's what's actually taking place in the spirit around this. Uh, Bobby, uh, have, have you seen anything in regards to uh, artificial intelligence? Is there anything that we need to be aware of as, as the church as this comes like, like, a, like a, a mighty wave? Artificial intelligence, that's what it is. They go, yeah, hey, here, a few years ago, the Lord said, Bobby, uh, how long are you going to let artificial intelligence go unchallenged? I said, I didn't know there was an issue there. And he said, if you don't uh, challenge it, it will choose who lives and dies. And so um, that's, that's uh, wow. when it happened, uh, that's when the uh, uh, young guy was playing uh, chess against a computer and the yeah. computer won. Wow. That's when the Lord told him, well, however long back that was, that's when the Lord said, uh, how long are you going to let this go unchallenged? And we better challenge it because uh, it's very, the people that invented it are afraid of it. Wow. You know, it, it, it's, it's spiraling out of their control. And, but uh, listen, we're, uh, we're in all kind of situations and circumstances, but uh, just to be quite honest with you, uh, this is a main event. I grew up playing football. I never liked scrimmage. I boxed. I never liked sparring. I like when the whistle blew and the bell rung. I like what's called the main event. And church, that's what we're in. This is not warm up. This is not scrimmage. This is for the whole bowl of wax, you know. And so we've got to fight a good fight. We've got to find out who we are and what's available to us. We've got to put on the whole armor of God. And uh, one of the things that is... Uh, uh, he, God's got to cut out of the church. It's a double-minded spirit. Yes, sir. A double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. You can't get out and party on Friday and come in church and hallelujah. I'm telling you, that's a quick way to get killed right now. That's right. It's a fearful thing to what? fall in the hands of a living God. Now, the, now, don't let these super secret friendly preachers uh, dupe you. You know, God knows that you're just, no, no. If we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of sin, there remains no more sacrifice for that sin but a fearful looking of fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. I'm going to tell you something I hope shocks you. I'm more afraid of God than I am the devil. Wow. I can rebuke the devil. That's true. But I, listen. Wow. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God, and wow. that's the only kind we've got. Wow. But we better clean up our act. You say, well, how, how do you do it? Well, search me, O God, and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in a way that's eternal and everlasting. We, we can't try to pick and choose what we want. That's right. Search me. Pull me open. That's right. I, let, let, let the light shine. And then when he exposes something, if you try to cover it up, you'll trip on it the rest of your life. Wow. As he puts his finger on it, quickly and thoroughly confess it and forsake it. Yes. And he'll put it as far as the east is from the west, never to remember it again. Wow. Now, and it'll, it won't lord over you. And so wow. that's amazing. God loves us. And he knows every bad, evil thing we've ever done and still loves us. Your that's friends right. won't. They find some dirt on you. They'll distance themselves. But when see God, God sees you struggling, he draws near. Aren't you glad? Amen. Hey, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7, simplistic. God is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those that are trusting him. I'm so thankful it didn't say God was good or he's going to be good. He is good right in the middle of your mess. Aren't you glad? Oh, he is good. So uh, I preached about Nahum, so they built the road in, uh, for, for my house, and they called it Nahum. Oh, wow. Nahum, yeah, I live on Nahum Road. That's anyway, awesome. we better start living in the Word, don't you think? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, but uh, these are pretty exciting days, honestly. Yeah. Listen, and there's encounters, just like that witch. It's a dumb devil send a witch to church. Ain't it a dumb devil? It's a dumb devil send a witch to church. I'll tell you what, we're not going to build a church where witches are comfortable. That's They're right. going to walk in That's and scream, right. fall That's out, right. and get, get delivered That's right. or dead. That's you know? right. And so, listen, a pretty serious thing. It is. Uh, one of the, anyway, 
Uh, we, we got to just, well, you say, well, Bobby, uh, I don't want no trouble. We're in trouble. I mean, we're, we're in a valley decision, aren't we? And we're going to make up our mind. We're going to, having done all to stand, stand. And, you know, no, I'm, start saying to yourself, I'm bold and I'm brave. I'm very courageous. I'm going to go do what I'm called and commissioned to do. And we're called to be salt and light. Have you ever found a verse in the Bible you wish it wasn't in there? Here's one. It says, uh, we're, we're the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its ability to function, we're good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. I don't ever want to be called a good for nothing Christian. But if the salt has lost its ability to function, it is good for nothing but to be cast out. And so that's not our, that's not our calling, is it? Ours is no. to be bold and brave, shining bright, you know. You're, it, what is it? Arise and shine for your light has come. And the what? Glory. I wrote all about the pandemic. I said, it's a shake up for wake up to get to church and, bathe, and, and embrace a greater glory. See, God won't do anything on earth without telling the prophets. And you can study it. For 29 years, I have a visitation from Jesus and write what's going to happen in the future. And it's pretty wild. It's been accurate so far. We prophesied the day and the hour of the desert storm war would happen six months before it happened. And so and we prophesied about the plague. If you can read, there's coming a, a pandemic, a plague. It'll be deadly and devastating. Uh, so it happens, you know. God tells you what. And so we engrave it and try to get the people to run with it, you know. And so anyway, these are exciting times. God's speaking. And here, I, I just want to clear up all your ears. You ready? The Bible says, Matthew 13, 16, and 17, Blessed are your eyes, for they see. And blessed are your ears, for they hear. Many long to see what you see and couldn't. Many deeply desire to hear what you hear and were not permitted. We are a privileged people to have open communication yes. with God. Yes. I'm telling you, for the Bible said, uh, my sheep do what? Hear my voice. See, I'm telling you, we've got to spend time being intimate with the Lord to amplify His voice. I'm telling you, He's speaking, isn't He? He's, uh, and in John 10, 3, my sheep hear my voice. John 10, 27 says they flee. They run away from other voices because they don't know it. But I'm stunned how easily led astray some Christians are. They don't have a foundation because they don't get into the Word of God. My people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. I love the Bible. It never asks a question without releasing an answer. Society and all that mess, they raise one question after another with no answer. But the Bible never asks a question without giving an answer. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Oh, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Yeah. See, if you look long enough, you'll find the answer. Right. It says everything in there is there to help us to live a, li a life and it's beneficial and prof profitable to, for us that are teachers. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, 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 I want you to have a good time. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. We ought to be happy. That's right. Jesus was the happiest person ever lived. That's Psalm 1611. You will show me the pathway of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At the right hand of God, there's pleasures forevermore. The, some Christians, most of them I know, have just enough Jesus to be miserable. Yeah. They got them in the head but not the heart. Yeah. They got rules, regulations, stipulations, manipulations. Have you ever read the Bible? God don't like religion. Not a, go, read, go read Isaiah and come back and tell me. Here's what he says. Away with your new moons and your Sabbaths and your holy convocations. They weary me. I'll pour the sizzling of your fat like God's going to throw us a barbecue, you know. Yeah. That's what he says in Isaiah. He said, away with your new moons and your Sabbaths and your holy convocations. You say, hold it, Bobby. No, God made all those festivals and feasts to point to Jesus. When we leave Jesus out and have the festival and feast, we've got religion. And God don't like religion. That's right. He don't. He likes relationship. That's right. Okay, so don't get called away. He said, oh, no, no, it's pretty complicated. Nah, it's so simple, a child. Uh, uh, you know, one guy told me, he said, you know, the, the plan's so, so complicated. You know what the Bible says? The plan of salvation is so simple that a wayfaring fool need not ear therein. So I said, give me that in Texican, that wayfaring fool deal. <laughs> if you got enough sense to get back to your house, you got enough sense to get saved. Come on. That's what it means. Come on. Yeah. See, that's not complicated. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart. It's, it's simple. It's so simple that a wayfaring fool need not ear therein. Yeah. So quit trying to complicate things and just jump in. 
And I'll tell you, it'll be the best decision you ever made. Colossians 1 said he takes us out of the family of death and darkness and transfers us into the family of light, love, and liberation. It's the greatest journey you'll ever take.